Dan Mullen has supposedly suggested to Scott Strickland that Lane Kiffin be the next head coach of the Gators. I have a lot of thoughts about Dan Mullen and the truth and what he speaks from time to time, but I'm not going to get into that. Do you believe that was actually the case when they instead hired the very detail-oriented Billy Napier? No, I'm just going to say it. I think Dan Mullen is lying here. I think Dan Mullen is, if you guys follow Dan Mullen, he has been doing nothing but troll Florida ever since he got fired. Nothing but troll Scott Strickland. This is a way to pile on and humiliate more because he doesn't think he should have been fired. And he has undercut and constantly thrown shade on Billy Napier ever since Billy Napier has been there. And this is just more to that. Who would do that date? Think about this. A coach says you're fired and you go, Okay, well, let me tell you who you should hire, even though you fired me, though, because I'm looking now for the best interest of the program. What coach would do that? Not if not fired. Um, I've left places, and they've asked me suggestions as to my replacement. But That's not different. Fired. I'm sure Nick Saban had a hand and uh, was asked about hiring Kalen DeBoer and gave his thoughts because he retired. But you're not going to, hey, Dan, you're fired. Now, why don't you tell us who you think we should hire? And Dan's like, well, I think you guys should hire Lane Kiffin. That, how does that conversation play out, guys? Come okay, on. Well, okay, you bring up a good point because I was going to argue the other side, but I'm with you because he's not going to say that walking out the door. And let's be real honest. Uh, Scott Strickland, this is the problem. You know, he's a former sports information director, uh, which is fine. Um, but – Typically, those aren't the people that you hire to be in those roles. Is that fair to say? You hire your yes. best fundraiser, your best administration guy. You don't hire the guy that sets up interviews. Okay? That doesn't seem analogous to be the AD uh, at the University of Florida. So that was the problem. Scott Strickland, even if he was told that, didn't have the power and the gravitas to be able to pull that hire off because – Lane was still at the time. I don't think he is anymore, but Lane was, you know, kind of like spoiled goods. Now I think he'd be a great fit at Florida, and I will go ahead and bet you that that he's the uh, head coach there for the Gators next year. Well, remember, this Ole Miss team under Lane Kiffin, I think this was the second team, they did go 10-3 and three and lose the Sugar Bowl. So I think that they had enough evidence to hire him at that moment, and they should have hired him. And he would have been a much better hire than Billy Napier. But it, now it looks more obvious – and I think that's what's so weird about it. It's like you pick the most obvious hire, and then you said, I told him they should have made this hire. And, I mean, Dan Mullen just last week made, sent out a tweet of how making fun of Florida on, like, how long they're trashing them for how long they're keeping Billy Napier and how they fired him after one mediocre season. By the way, all fair, I'll say this much, I didn't think Florida should have fired Dan Mullen. I know you say he couldn't recruit. I think ability to recruit can be overrated when you're in Gainesville and if you're winning. And I think that's even more pronounced. Now, I mean, Steve Spurrier didn't even bother to recruit. And he still landed top 10 classes because he was in Florida. And that was with Florida State and Miami at their peak. Florida State and Miami are not at their peak right now. So you can really land a lot of talent. I think it was a mistake. But I think Dan Mullen is just I, – I can't see him being honest in the situation because I can't see how this conversation plays out. And someone pointed out on the message board, and this is true, I know Cam Newton himself does not have a great history with the truth. But – I'm starting to believe him more, Dave. He did tell a story last uh, a few months ago that, you know, when he committed, it it was only after he committed to Auburn because, as we know, Mississippi State went, went after him hard when Dan Mullen was right. there, and it was only after he committed to Auburn he says that's when Dan Mullen leaked the story of him accepting this money to try to go to or you know shopping himself to Mississippi State and getting the offer from Mississippi State, and he was saying that Dan Mullen leaked that story out of pure vindictiveness because he didn't go to Mississippi State. Okay. Would you like to see Lane Kiffin at Florida? Do you think that Lane Kiffin would take the Florida job? Do you see a potential marriage there and how good would they be? Oh, I see a marriage there. I absolutely see a marriage there. I think that's the one place where you could convince Ed Orgeron to come out of retirement and be on your staff if you're Lane Kiffin, quite honestly. Um, now, I don't know if he would do it because I think if he's on the staff, they don't have, well, or he doesn't get that buyout, a, a portion of that buyout money from LSU. But if he does get all that money, 
And if he blows through it because he's drinking and partying and dusting too much, <laughs> you can, if you're Lane Kiffin, you take the Florida job, you put Ed Orgeron as your defensive line coach and make him your primary recruiter. Oh my gosh, Dave, how much, well, that, you guys can hate Florida and I get it. You're Tennessee, you hate Florida, but how much fun would that team be? It'd be a lot of fun. I, I, I'm rooting for Lane. I've, I've said this before, um, and I've probably been guilty of being uh, too much of a me guy when I was younger. I don't think he's that anymore. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that everybody's perfect, nor am I, but um, I think that he is finally confident in, in himself, and he is a special, special offensive mind. And I think he would do fantastic there. Um, I think he would do really good, and I think it would be a spur in the ball saddle for a number of years. Uh, we included Lane Kiffin in the tweet that we just sent out, so maybe he'll be watching the show. And Lane, you can respond uh, with if you're watching with uh, do do you would you want the Florida job? And we'll break some news right here. So, would you like to see Lane Kiffin at Florida? Yes, great storyline. No, he's just too good. But the thing is, it's not like there's an SEC East anymore. So you don't have to overcome him each and every year to win the SEC. I mean, to win the SEC, you would have to beat him in an SEC championship game. And I don't want to go down the road if that's meaningless. But you know, he is Florida a permanent Florida's a permanent opponent, right? As of right now, but that again, they, they haven't set the schedule past 2025 because Greg Sinke, I still don't think, has this thing unlocked the way he does, the way he should, questioning him as a commissioner, um, as I have been for a long time. But yeah, so I, it's one, the reason I don't think they're moving the schedule past 2025, Dave, I don't think they know what the conferences are going to look like in 2026 still. And so I think they're scared to set any schedules in stone because of that. And if you could magically see two teams play on Saturday, and we've got a delicious matchup with Tennessee, Oklahoma, the best storyline you could possibly imagine. To me, that's number one. Josh Heupel goes back to Oklahoma. But if you could line two teams up and play tomorrow, I would argue that the most entertaining with the lead up and all that would be Ole Miss and Tennessee playing on Saturday. And I'll t I would take that over Georgia, Texas. I would take that over any other rivalry you can come up with. I would love that. The only one that would be close would be Tennessee, Texas this week since Arch Manning is playing for oh, Texas. Yeah. That's a good um, one. Yeah. But, you know, you bring all this up. It's obviously Lane Kiffin's gunning for a job like that. And, I'm, and I'll tell you guys this straight up. Don't you think that's – because Lane Kiffin's as good of a quarterback. As, actually, I don't know. You tell me, Dave. I think Lane Kiffin's a better quarterback's coach than Steve Starkeesian. I think they're both good, but I think Lane Kiffin actually gets the edge if you're a quarterback and you want to get developed. Boy, after what I've seen from Jackson Darth this year, and I can't say enough about him, I'm going to agree with you. So if you're Arch Manning, you could go to your alma mater to play for the coach that you think – that we think is better at developing, but to choose Texas. The only reason you didn't go to the Manning Lore School in Ole Miss is because – you don't think Lane Kiffin's going to be there within a year? Well, I don't think the Mannings and Kiffins probably see eye to eye on a lot of things, including the way he left Tennessee, right? Yeah, that's so, true. That that does well. That that's a very good point. That doesn't yeah. jive well with the way he left Tennessee. Now, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that would uh, that would work out. I'm I'm sure they tried. I'm sure he tried to recruit him. But, but remember, the Mannings and Ole Miss didn't see eye to eye on things, particularly given the history of Archie and Tennessee <laughs> until no. Peyton Manning went to Tennessee. No, that's true. Um, our, our poll question, where do we stand? Uh, okay, so our poll question is, who would you most – oh, wait. Who would you like to see Lane Kiffin at Florida? No, he's just too good, 67%. Yes, great storyline, 33%. I'm sorry, guys. I like the storyline. I get yeah. it if you're a Tennessee fan and you're worried about it, but I like – fun sec storylines i live for it um you know <laughs> i do look ed orsron at lsu that, I, that and your gambling problem exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> ed orsron at lsu was great because he was a louisiana guy through and through and just fit the culture even if he couldn't maintain it I now want to see Lane Kiffin and Ed Orgeron, not in Florida, but I want to see him in Miami. So I'm about that. I want to see Lane Kiffin as the head coach of Miami. I just want to see them on a staff together like they were in Tennessee, Dave. Lane Kiffin and Ed Orgeron. Build the most entertaining staff in college football. Let's just do this real quick. The funniest staff. Yeah, I'm up. I'm up. Well, uh, Lane pretty much did that in Knoxville. 
Uh, <laughs> I had a great lunch uh, with uh, Jacob Warren at Asia Cafe. That was awesome. Treat yourself to authentic Asian cuisine, handcrafted from guarded family recipes. Five locations to choose from, asiacafe.org, asiacafe.org. And again, they've got that six to one Brazilian cocoa energy booster premix instant white coffee, the golden label bag with the Lim family right there on it. You can get it at Asia Cafe. It's soon to be in retail stores near you, Asia Cafe. Dot org. All right. So the uh, no, we've done the stat of the day. Uh, so, Caleb, if you had to bet, which you often do with a gambling problem, um, <laughs> would you, would you uh, bet that Lane Kiffin is the head coach at Florida next year? I'll give you this option. Uh, no bet. Um, bet a car payment, bet a mortgage or bet it all. This is difficult for you. You're thinking about this. No bet. And I'm going to tell you why. What? No bet. Because Lane Kiffin's a bit of a mercenary and you have to, Florida has issues that go so much deeper than who the head coach is that Lane Kiffin is smart enough to know he's not going to a good situation. And I also think Lane Kiffin is, did Lane Kiffin don't want to get burned again. He went to USC, Dave, and then he got stuck in a, really bad situation that he wasn't prepared for. And he's not stupid enough to make that decision again. And that would happen with Florida right now because of how incompetent their administration is. Also because the LSU job may be opening up. Well, based off source is not Lane. I'll just go ahead and clarify that. Um, based off sources, he wanted the Florida job more, but he reached out to the LSU job. That's what I was told. Um, but would he take the LSU job tomorrow? I'm sorry if there are any Ole Miss fans that are on here, but yes. In a heartbeat. If Brian Kelly in decided to retire, he'd take it in a heartbeat. And it would and what, LSU has standards on who they hire. They have they have they have personal conduct standards. Is, is, have they decided that now? Are we saying that about LSU? Now let me let me ask you this too. Yes, uh, I guess. Um, but let me. They've never had that before. Well, you you can't knock the hire though with Brian Kelly. That seemed like he was just a few talented defensive linemen away from winning the national championship at Notre Dame. So I I don't knock that hire just because they didn't hire Lane. I don't think that was the decision. I think they went out and got a a good coach who's underperforming, which is another argument. But here's another thing that I was told by a very good source, and that was. Lane Kiffin, who, again, I'm going to defend him, guys. I know for a fact that you think he's just about me, but I don't think that's that's the case anymore. I mean, everybody's about themselves to some extent. But I was told that he didn't want to take the Auburn job because he didn't want to move at that particular time because of his family, uh, and they liked the Oxford, Oxford uh, area. Now, if you would have told me that in – uh, 2000, um, what, 15? I would have laughed out loud, but now I kind of believe it. Do you buy that? Yes, Auburn is not. A, Auburn is a. No, only, that he that he's making decisions. No, that's not the question I was asking. That he's making decisions that are based off of his happiness and not just this internal quest, which he'll always have to be as highly respected as his father. That's his drive, and I don't blame him. His father was a great man and a great coach, and I don't know if you can do that at Ole Miss. I don't know that you can win a championship there. So I'm asking, would he would he weigh those external things above just winning a championship and b benefiting his career? Yes, but that's why I was trying to finish. It depends. Like, if it's, if it's Ole Miss and he's happy there versus Alabama, he's probably taking the Alabama job or the LSU job. But the reason I said Auburn is Auburn's only marginally a better job than Ole Miss. It's a better job, but only marginally. And guys, and, and, and people get mad at me for saying this, and I'm still going to say it. Oxford's a way better town than Auburn. Auburn's not enough of a better job to leave Oxford for. Um, and more importantly than that, um, if you're Lane Kiffin, um, the co-eds look a lot better at Ole Miss than they do at, Ox at uh, Auburn. That, that actually is a misnomer. They just dress a little bit nicer. And I will tell you this, too. No. No, no, no. That's true. No, it's true. And the co-eds at, um, you know, that's like a big agriculture and engineering school there at Auburn or something like that. And um, let's just say you don't have to be the best looking man in the world to score a hottie. 
Lane Kiffin doesn't have to be the best looking man in the world anywhere, though. Yeah, I was there one time for a, I mean, I was walking to the stadium and it was noticeable how many goofy looking guys were with great looking girls. Like it was noticeable at Auburn. Noticeable. I brought it up to, I believe, Mike Strange. We were walking to the stadium together and it was very noticeable. And I, I even said something to the sports information person that was checking our credentials. And I said, there seems to be a little bit of, uh, I don't know, upselling with some of these guys that are uh, uh, sh- shooting pretty high and making it. And he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, no, it was a she. She goes, yeah, there, there's a lot of girls that major here in a wifing. They just want to find a husband. Yeah, they find the engineer that's going to make the, make the money. I totally understand that. <laughs>